Welcome to part 9 of my Adobe Premiere Pro series to get you up and running in the program how to edit videos and ditch programs like Windows Movie Maker and Sony Vegas. So, why is this program awesome? Well, it's awesome because of this next video. I'm going to show you something really, really cool, which it's just one simple thing, but if but it applies to every setting here on the effect controls. But let's wait a bit, okay? Let me just wait one single bit. Before we go over that, let me just review what you've learned so far. And I seriously, you should you deserve a clap. I mean, I'm clapping right now. I don't know. I'm in my room alone talking to a microphone. Nobody is here. It's insane. My mouth is really dry from these tutorials. Let me drink a, let me drink a little bit of water. Okay, that was really good. Too bad I'm out of water now. Anyways, so here we go. What have you done? Well, you've learned how to open the program, set up a project. Actually, you learned how to organize files into a folder so you don't accidentally delete files. You get good workflow down. You've learned how to make a sequence so you can get stuff onto your timeline. You've learned about the project uh, pane so you can organize your footage right away. You've learned about the basics of the source editor, how to add stuff from the source editor, how to cut clips, how to use all the tools over there on the side. You've learned, oh my, holy, holy snap guys, you guys, you've learned a lot. You've learned about curve editing, which you probably didn't expect in this series. That, this is a big deal guys. And now you're at the point where you're learning the effect controls, which is where editing gets a lot of fun, okay? So, I'm really proud of you so far, and really, congratulations guys, seriously, congratulations. All right, so let's move on. Let me go into what I want to teach you in this video. And in this video, I'm going to teach you about, oh my gosh, ready, drum roll, please, animation in the effect controls pane. And that is what that little clock does for you, okay? This is where it gets really, really cool. And this is how I do a lot of my overlay effects in my videos, in my tutorials, or whatever. Because you can animate any of these little things here that has a clock next to it that you can, that you can click. You can animate any of those. Let me show you how to do that. Really anything that has a number you can animate. Okay, so volume, bypass, level. That's why I told you to turn off level because when that's on, it's doing something called auto key, which let me show you in a bit, okay? So let me just, mm, let me see, what do I want to do? Okay, I'm going to drop on my graphic that you haven't seen yet. This right here, my transparent background graphic. I, 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 don't, know, I don't even know if I showed you this, but it's my logo. And this logo has a black background in this preview, but it really has a transparent background, which means, like I went over transparency and opacity in, in, the, in the past video, but it doesn't have a background. It's just the logo. So let me drag this over my footage on layer two so it shows over my video. And you can see it's taken up the whole video, but if you look on the edges, it shows the video behind it. So how do I fix this massive logo? I made this logo super huge, so whatever file I need to use it on, that's, you know, it's going to fit. So that's why I made my logo huge. But let me go ahead and change the size, the scale of this logo. And I'm going to pretend that I want to make it a watermark, okay? So here we go. About that size-ish, I'm just going to eyeball it. Go to motion, move it down to a bottom right corner, and look at that. Now, if I render this out, Look at this, my video is playing. That's how you add a watermark, guys. I don't know if you've ever, if you've known that, but that's how you make a watermark for your videos. You just make sure your logo has a transparent background. If it's a custom shape, like mine is a circle, you just scale it down and move it to the side like that. And congratulations. And if you want, if you want to get fancy with it, you can even adjust the opacity of it because you've already learned how to do that, right? Opacity, let me turn off this little keyframe thing. And oops, I'm adjusting my, uh, my main footage. We go to opacity, turn that off, bring this down, and look at this. I can change how see-through it is. So I can go about right here to 58% and just show you what it looks like over my footage. See how I can see through it. I see my face through it. There you go. So now it's not too distracting. You can see through it, and it's not going to block anything too much if I use that part of the video in my main footage. So there you go. That's how you make a watermark for your videos. Congratulations. That's a whole nother tutorial in a tutorial. All right. So let's animate the, let's animate something on this, on this watermark. Okay. I want to animate it. So it moves from the bottom right corner. Of course, if you're using this as a watermark, this is not what you want to do. This is just an example. Okay. I'm going to animate it to go to the top corner right here, the top right corner. So how do you do that? Well, check it out. Let me make this program window smaller. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me more space over here. I'm going to move this to the side. Okay. So all my parameters are now over here. And now I have all this space, which will make sense in a bit. Okay. If I click my graphic footage and I scrub up here on this timeline, this 
is the total duration of how long that logo lasts for in the video. So let me show you what I mean here, okay? Look how I'm scrubbing. It's scrubbing through the whole video because that's how long the graphic is set to last for on this layer. If I bring this all the way down to about here, okay, and I click my footage, if I click over here on my timeline, see how I'm not, the logo doesn't exist there on my timeline? Well, the bar's not there either up here in this parameters, but if I click in the, over here above where the graphic is, it shows up. And now I can scrub in here, and if, you, if I scrub all the way left to right, look down in the timeline. It's scrubbing the complete duration of the graphic alone. So this is very important to understand, okay? This certain timeline only affects the duration of that particular footage that I have selected. What does this do for me? Let me just go and extend it all the way back, all the way back to the whole footage. So if I scrub it, it's going to scrub through the whole footage. All right. So what I want to do is within two seconds, I want this logo to move up to the top right corner. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to move this bar all the way to the beginning of the footage. Okay. Snap it. Boom right here to zero seconds of this graphic footage. I'm going to hit position and click this little animation. It says toggle animation. What that does when this button is on is it makes it so you're on auto key mode now. What is auto key? If I move this to five seconds in the footage, okay, so let me move five seconds in five, zero, zero, five seconds in, okay, now what I can do is position, click motion, and move this up. Alright, so you see a few things here. First of all, you see this line being made right here on the program itself. This line represents the motion, okay? And if I spread this out, you can kind of see a bunch of dots. Those dots are all the little frames. Those are all the frames of where this logo is going to go, okay? So let me put this on the top right. All the little dots are frames. The second thing you see is over here, you will notice that there is a second keyframe automatically made. Okay, automatically made because auto key right here, this clock, is on. So now if I go back to the beginning of my footage and press play, look at that logo. It's now animating the position. That right there is super cool. So now if I move to, let's say, seven seconds, seven, zero, zero, enter. What I can do is move this to a different corner. And look how the animation is being affected. That's pretty important to know right now, okay? That's pretty important to note. It's it's creating, what, do you, what was it? A Bezier curve animation, okay? Where it's smoothening out the animation. Go back to the beginning of my footage, press play. Look how it moves now. It's moving right there. Five seconds reaches its point, And over two seconds, it reaches its next point. See how it moved faster? between the five seconds and seven seconds that's because between five to seven seconds is a two second change so you see the keyframes or the little frames here are more widespread which, which means that in each frame if I go next step forward look how much space it moves okay with each single frame if I go back to my big the beginning of my footage and I press each frame look how fat look how look how close each frame is okay and that's because this is a five second change it takes five seconds to get from one point to another. And between here and here, it takes two seconds. It's going to move a lot faster. Okay, because it's like, all right, I could take my time because I have a whole five seconds to get to my next point. But, oh my gosh, I just, uh, I need to hurry up and get to my point because my boss only gave me two seconds to go get him his coffee. So I have to run over there and get the coffee. So that's what that is right there. And depending on how close your keyframes are, that is how fast the graphic is going to move. That's going to determine how fast the animation or how long the animation lasts for. It's very, very important to understand. All right, so this video is getting a little complicated. The good thing, though, is that what I'm teaching you here applies to everything here. Okay, so if I animated the scale, the rotation, or whatever, everything the same applies. Okay, you'd have the same keyframes right here, which I didn't even show you about, but these are your keyframes. And if I click one and drag one over, Look at that, I am adjusting how far the keyframes are. So remember this was a five second change? Well now this is seconds, maybe a minute or two long. Nope, that's not a minute long, but it's gonna take even longer to get there. Because look how look how close these are. Look how far away these are. You have to get there 
you have to get from point A to point B in a shorter amount of time compared to these. All right, now let me take this keyframe off and click OK. It's going to delete all your keyframes and keep the settings where you were on that frame. All right, so let me move the scale back down because I kind of messed up my footage in a, in a last take. Let me move it back down to the right side. And let me show you how you can get an even more fine-tuned uh, editing of your keyframes, I guess you could say. Let me click position. Okay, so now, or actually let me click the animation toggle button. And now I can, it's on auto key mode, so if I move anything, you know, it's going to change. So if I uh, change the position here, it's going to change and automatic, automatically create a keyframe. Now, here's the thing. See these buttons right here on the side? They are now appear. They appear next to these numbers as soon as you toggle this animation button. This button goes to the previous keyframe. It'll snap to the next forward and back. Well, these, that's what those arrows do. Okay, they will snap to the next keyframe. So it's better than clicking this and trying to get right on that frame and then changing the numbers. You want to click left and right on these arrows to get right and snap to that keyframe so you can adjust it. Because if you're like, all right, actually, I don't like where it ends up. I want to change that. It's really hard because if I let's say let's say I guesstimate and I say okay say I have bad guessing, that that's where I think the uh, the 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 keyframe is. I'm gonna change this. If I change that. Look at that. It made a second keyframe right next to it. That's not good. So I'm gonna Control Z that. What we want to do is snap using these arrows to the key, and then you could change it, and it won't make a second keyframe right next to your current one because that'll really mess you up. Let's say I'm guesstimating, and I move it way up here. If I play this back it's gonna snap super fast because the keyframes are so close together so you see this button in the middle what that does is it adds or removes a keyframe alright so let me move here and click add keyframe that right there is gonna lock in all these settings right here okay this this position number so if I let's say I want here's what I want to do okay I want my logo to let me delete all the past keyframes okay I want my logo to stay stationary for the first two seconds after two seconds that's when I want it to start moving and it's gonna take me up to 10 seconds to get to the upper left corner okay so frame zero I want it to stay where it is alright I'm gonna click add keyframe that'll lock in these numbers I'm gonna move two seconds again so two zero zero down here at the bottom left all right, so I'm two seconds in. Now what I'm going to do is click another keyframe. Boom. What did I just do? That means that between these two seconds, these numbers will not change. So long as I don't make a keyframe in the middle and change the numbers or change any of these keys, any of the numbers on these keys. Okay, so now I want to go over to 10 seconds. And now I'm going to move it. Okay, motion, move it up. So... For the first two seconds, my logo is not going to move. One, two, and then it's going to start moving up. Okay, so that is what is really important about creating your own keyframes. You can set things to stay where they are or completely change course of something. Let me show you what I mean by that. So remember, these between these two frames right here, nothing's moving. All right, so I went ahead and changed the size of my content of my graphic right here in the timeline just so I can make this bar a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on okay so these are my two seconds and then this is from two seconds to ten seconds and so you see it moves just so you can see these keyframes a lot easier alright so now here's what I want to do okay you can see it doesn't move it's stationary right here but between these lines it's moving let's say right here in the middle of these two keyframes I want it to bend out and I want it to go to the middle of the video what I'm gonna do is auto key is already on so I don't need to press keyframe I'm just gonna click motion move my logo right here look what it does in the program it's showing that it's moving out right here so in the middle it's gonna come out to the middle of the video so two seconds go by not moving at all because these numbers haven't changed at all but in the middle of this now it's bending out it's an auto key just like that that's what's dangerous about auto key you have to keep in mind that whenever you change something on auto key the position there's gonna be a curve change from your last frame to the current frame that you're making okay so if I move this down over here or yeah if I move it down over here look how the the curve is affected only because auto key is on so that's really important to know not moving and it's moving and it all moves just like that so you can get some pretty cool animations just by changing 
keyframes and keyframing your graphic in certain areas. Okay, so now you know how to basically animate each of these parameters in the effect controls panel. But Jerry, I want more control over my animation. What can I do? You can create animation curves out of this. How do I view those? Bring down this little arrow. Boom! Look at that. You now have your animation curves right here. All because I brought down this arrow to bring down what it looks like. How amazing is this? So this is what our curves look like. See how they're constant changes? So what I can do is click a frame and look at now you have your Bezier handles. Oh my goodness. Things just got intense. I already taught you how to use these handles. Use them how you will. You'll see that now I've just affected the way that this thing moves. Okay, if I click this and move a handle, look at the frames. Okay, look how the frames are being affected on the program. That is pretty cool there. If I right click this, temporal animation, and go to auto bezier, you can see how the frames are affected, how this is affected, how all these, when I move each of these little things here, you can change it. Now you can adjust the, the frames here. Now if you don't like the way this curve editor works and you'd rather work in the timeline, look at, you're using the position, the motion position we can do is you actually have that effect control here motion position and look at the same curve that's right here is right there and you can actually zoom in onto your timeline which makes it a lot better here you can actually zoom in right here as well I actually like animating down here in the timeline because you can actually make your your uh, curves bigger and you get better adjustments here so check it out we can do a bunch of cool stuff you can adjust them just like this it's a lot easier to visualize what's going on right click auto bezier and I mean I already showed you how to do all this stuff all depending on how you want your animation to react that's how the curves are going to affect your animation so there you go if you want to affect controls of each of your parameters here in the effect controls through the curve editor you can do that by using this curve editor here you can zoom out or using this curve editor down here in the timeline if it's a if it's supported uh, right here okay and actually all the motion controls are supported it'd just be like effects that wouldn't work and we'll go over that in the next video I'll show you some video effects so again you can animate these effect controls anything that has a number you can animate it in Adobe Premiere which is super super exciting and I just showed you that you can keyframe you can change where the keyframes are you can do so much stuff here you can animate the keyframes with curves down here in the actual effect windows control the effect control pane or you can use a timeline to uh, get a bigger version of your curves and edit it there which is my preferred way you, there's so much oh my gosh guys there's so much flexibility in this program that's why I love Premiere I'm gonna say it again I love Premiere because all this flexibility especially with these animation options I mean it's it's amazing guys I mean seriously it's amazing the way that it's all laid out here in Premiere I prefer it over any other program so there you go you now know that you can animate each of these things And if you're gonna get into it you know you can scale look at this if you're gonna get all crazy your project might just look like this where everything has keys on it you know I mean your stuff can look crazy crazy advanced you know like before if, if I would have shown you what this is you'd have been like I, I don't understand this what what are all these dots and what is this well now you understand what all these dots mean they're all keyframes and they're all adjusting the footage based on what each of these numbers are on these keys so there you go guys that is that this was a jam-packed video it was a long video come again for another video for Adobe Premiere I don't think the next one's gonna be as long this is probably my longest part but I wanted to take my time with it explain it to you guys correctly so thank you guys for watching Remember to thumb up, comment, and subscribe. And remember, the biggest thing for me is to share my videos. I'm doing all this for you guys. It means a lot. So come back to the next part, which is part 10 of this series.